I don't think that we can ever have peace with my family unless the truth is out there. Prince Harry sharing painful and deeply personal details of the family rift that rocked the British royal family and the world. There's a lot that I can um, forgive, but there needs to be conversations and then in order for reconciliation, and part of that has to be accountability. In his new memoir, Spare, Prince Harry chronicles the family dynamics that defined his life and led him and his wife, Meghan, to leave the UK and the royal family. Within the family as such, there's a, a spare and the heir, mm -hmm. um, my brother being the heir and me being the spare. And so I think it was just a really good opportunity to choose a, a title that had been somewhat used against me for a long part of my life and own that title. There's a quote in this book where you refer to your brother as your um, beloved brother and arch nemesis. Strong words. There has always been this competition between us, weirdly. Again, I think it really plays into or is played by the air spare. To the outside world, Prince Harry and his brother Prince William always appeared close, bonded by their mother's tragic death. But in his memoir, Harry writes about a more complex relationship. His life is, is planned out for him. Because Whereas for the spare, mm, that's not really what you should do. You should kind of be sitting there a little bit in the monarch shadow and just wait your turn. In his book, Prince Harry writes about a fight he had with his brother in 2019 over Meghan Markle. A fight that he says turned physical when his brother grabbed him by the collar and pushed him to the floor. Harry writes it was a relationship that had tension. You speak about your brother and the argument, there were fights almost as if you should do what I tell you. No, he didn't. It wasn't, um, it's not to say that by him saying, no, you can't do this, that there's a rule that says that I can't, right? It was more of a sort of a, a brother, I guess, competition. You get a chance to tell your story now. Your brother may never have that chance to tell his side of the story. Are you sympathetic to that? Yes, 100%. And I think, you know, after, after I've done this, the book comes out, I would hope that other members of the family feel as though they can write their own book. How would your mom feel about your relationship with your brother now? I think she would be sad. I think she'd be looking at, looking at it long term to know that there are certain things that we need to go through to be able to heal the relationship. But do you think you have any responsibility in the breakdown of the relationship? I'm, I'm without question, I'm sure. But what people don't know is the efforts that I've gone to to resolve this privately, both with my brother and with my father, constantly for the last six years, but especially the last two. I think my mother would realize the missed opportunity with Meghan being part of the institution, part of the monarchy. And I think she is looking forward to the time when William and I see eye to eye and are joined at the hip again. Some critics are going to say, well, you're taking private, private struggles and you're bringing them into the public and you're, you're making money off of them. For me, having seen my family and the institution's part in constantly feeding the British press with lies, mistruths, mis disinformation, the only way that I can correct those mistruths is by writing something, <laughs> the truth, in one place without going through the same people that they chose to go through. Harry reserves much of his frustration for the British press, claiming members of the royal family refused to set the record straight on false reports, especially about his wife, Meghan, shifting the negative spotlight onto her in order to protect other royals. They pitched the Waleses, right, of which Kate and William are, are now, against the Sussexes, me and my wife. They pitch Kate and Meghan against each other. Harry says women who marry into his family face intense media scrutiny. But when it came to Meghan, he says the British press used her race against her. My wife is not visibly black, but that's who she is. The way that they speak about her and the way they treat her is incredibly relatable to everybody else of color. With the paparazzi playing a role in his mother's deadly car crash, Harry says that he feared the relentless British media coverage of his family could endanger Meghan and their son, Archie. I'm trying to put a stop to this because I can't ever imagine, and I don't want to imagine history repeating itself, right? By 2020, they had had enough. 
Harry writes that he suggested a possible solution to the royal family, a hybrid proposal that would have allowed them to split their time between Canada and the UK while still serving the Queen. We didn't want to leave. We wanted to carry on serving the Queen. There was no compromise with the family? No, there was no compromise, which was really sad because I still to this day believe that this was entirely possible. Recently, you lost your grandmother. Did she ever express that she was upset at you? For what? Or wanting to change your role within no, the family? She... My grandmother and I had a very good relationship, but I had many, many conversations with her, both in the UK over the years, in the run-up to the point of this change. She knew what was going on, she knew how hard it was. She never said to me that she was angry. I think she was sad that it had got to that point. Harry writes about the jealousy, says his father and his stepmother Camilla had over, quote, someone new dominating a monarchy, end quote, and the idea of Meghan overshadowing them. You're in the car with your father and your brother. Kind of casually brings up Meghan and then casually drops in that um, he doesn't have enough. He wouldn't be able to support you both. How did that make you feel? Where did that come from? My father was ultimately responsible for both me and my brother and, you know, our, our partners and our families. Um, so it did seem a little bit strange that somehow the rules were being changed or that I was being guided on a very different path, or at least my, my partner was being guided on a very different path, should we end up getting married. Prince Harry also opened up about his feelings for his stepmother, now the queen consort. When your father married Camilla, you wrote, I had complex feelings about gaining a step-parent who I thought had recently sacrificed me on her personal PR altar. Hmm. What has she done at that point, you felt? I have a huge amount of compassion for her, you know, um, being the, the third person within my parents' marriage. And she had a reputation or an image to rehabilitate. And whatever conversations happened, whatever deals or trading was, was made right at the beginning, she was led to believe that that would be the best way to doing it. He also writes that he and his brother begged his father not to marry her. And what is your relationship with Camilla now? We haven't spoken for a long time. Um, you know, I, I love every member of my family, despite the differences. I don't look at her as an evil stepmother. I see someone who has done everything that she can to, you know, improve her own reputation and her own image. Camilla was famously called the third person in his parents' marriage by Princess Diana. Throughout the book, Prince Harry describes being haunted by his mother's death. The first time I cried was uh, at the burial. But and then, then after I'll... that, you said you, you didn't cry for years. Yeah. Why? It wasn't through lack of trying. <laughs> you just... <laughs> I tried. Yeah. Believe me, I tried. But there was, there was nothing there. It was, it was, I was numb. Did you feel guilty for not crying? Once I started therapy, I started to understand that, or at least I thought, that there was this huge weight on my chest due to the fact that I hadn't cried and that my mum needed me to cry or I needed to cry to prove to my mum that I missed her. I suddenly realised that actually she didn't want me to cry. She really just wanted me to be happy. But it took you a while to get there because there was, you talked about how for a while you, in your mind, magical thing. you said, yeah. she's hiding. Yeah, yeah I th 100% it's a defence mechanism, right? I think for anyone especially if you're a kid. I was 12 years old. I refused to accept that that was, that was what had happened. Harry recalling a visit to his mother's grave in 2017 and a candid conversation he says he shared with his brother. He felt as though she was very much in his life and helped set him up. And that he felt as though she'd now moved over and was helping me set my life up. I think she would be heartbroken that it's ended up where it's ended up. You said you want your father and brother back. Mm. Do you think that this book is going to bring them back or are they going to further divide you? I have thought about it long and hard. And as far as I see it, the divide couldn't be greater before this book. But I genuinely believe that if me and my family can reconcile, 
can put our differences behind us, but first there needs to be conversation and accountability. And if that doesn't happen, then that's very sad. But I will focus on my, my life, my amazing family that I'm so grateful to have, my two kids who are bouncing up and down here this morning. I'm not angry anymore. There are things that will still anger me, but I'm not angry anymore because I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. Our thanks to Michael. We received a response from the law firm representing Buckingham Palace earlier today, saying that the palace needed to, quote, consider exactly what is said in the interview and the context in which it appears, end quote, and ask that we supply them immediately with a copy of the entire interview. But we do not do that as a matter of policy at ABC News.